Rebecca Front has also found time to write her new book. It's really good. It's Impossible Things Before Breakfast. How appropriate <laughs> <laughs> to be here talking about this. This is a great read because you can sort of dip into it and dip out of it. I really that's, like it. That's the hope, yeah, because yeah. they're all quite short chapters. Yeah. And little sort of short stories and hopefully funny, predominantly funny. No, they are very, very much. I mean, to be honest with you, when I was reading this, I was kind of going, oh, it's not just me that does that then. Yes, that's, you exactly, a bit of that? that's exactly what I want. Yeah, this is my <laughs> second book and that's absolutely what I wanted with the first book as well. I didn't want it to be a book about I don't know you know going to kind of theatre openings or those kind of actressy type things I want sure. it to be about stuff that that everybody recognizes sure. strange encounters slightly embarrassing moments those kind of moments where you sort of walk away from somebody and think why did I do that that was so weird of me to do that mm. so that's my kind of area which there's I a bit like. of your family in here which there wasn't in the first one yeah but they're okay with that they, they were fine. yeah they were they were very very encouraging actually my parents are referenced in the first one but this time I've been much more open with the kids yeah and I ran everything past them just oh, said, you sure this Absolutely. isn't going to come back and haunt you but it's all very positive about them it's always I'm always the idiot in these <laughs> stories and yeah the kids were really thrilled I think they just sort of went great put it's, it in it's funny it's also very moving because you talk about a sad story about the loss of a friend and I think yeah. an awful lot of people would relate to that yeah and I think what I've tried to focus on in that story she, she was part of a group of mums you know we all met in the playground and she was somebody who I really have ha, still have enormous affection for yeah, yeah. and part of the point of putting it in in a way is that I felt after she died like I'd fallen short and I think that's something that people recognise very much so um, you know, I just felt like I wish I'd put in a bit more time and yeah. and and known what to say a bit more. You know, yeah. it's that thing when somebody you know somebody's ill and she knew she was ill and you kind of don't know what to say. So I just made lots of jokes all the time, which I think in one way was good. I think she probably liked that. But in another way, I sort yeah, of think yeah. oh, I don't know. Maybe I could have been there a bit. More. Uh, loads of people will relate to that. That really struck a chord with me. That one right. and also the hypochondria one. Oh, Because I think we're yes. all like that, aren't we? Yeah. Especially I, now we can Google things. I hope it's not just me. Yeah, oh, I'm no, terrible. I always know exactly what's wrong with me when I go to the doctor and, and then it turns out. Not that at all. Because you've made the mistake of going on the internet. Yeah, Nobody should ever do that. And you've been really open as well about things like have been anxious. And you know what? The amount of people that I talk to, Rebecca, is astonishing. The amount of people who have that. People you would never in a million years. You see them from the other side of the, the room and you think they are the most confident. Yeah you know, together people and everybody is having their own problems inside. I, I, just think, don't it's, know. I think it's everybody. I, I do. just don't I really think there's, do there's no such thing as normal. I think everybody <laughs> has something. And anxiety in particular, you know, yeah, as you say, it's often oh. the most confident people, they just put on a better act. They're just better at hiding it. Yeah. And because we all get overwhelmed, every single one of us gets overwhelmed. They Absolutely. really do. And it's it's tough, but this is great. I mean, is this something you're going to be doing more of? More writing? I don't know. I think my agent would quite like me to <laughs> do some more. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll give it a little you know, a few months and clear my head of these yeah. stories and then see. But I, could but I see do make you. notes all the time. I could so, hear you, you know. talking to me when I was reading it oh, and good. I could see you as well because it, it would work as sketches, you know, on the telly. I thought it was really funny. Yeah, no, it, that's that's very much what what I'm trying to do is to just do something where which feels very conversational sure. and, you know, feels very kind of natural yeah, and, and no, like, a, like a person talking to another person, that's not exactly something what it's terribly like. literary. Now, look, can we talk Paul Dark? Oh, OK. Yeah, no, I'm a massive <laughs> fan. I didn't know you were going to see you in Paul Dark. It's so exciting. Yeah. Now, Ozzy is horrible. Yeah. The vile. most awfulest, horriblest person. The actor who plays him is the nicest man in the world. He is, isn't he? You met him recently. He I was on last week He's and so handsome. Lovely. I mean, actually, right. the, um, Christian Brassington, who plays Ozzy, and I spent some oh, time Oh, there you are talking. together. Oh, I can, oh, yes. See, he doesn't look like that in real life. I don't know how he does no, that. No, he's, he's <laughs> lost lots of weight and he's just, he's just so sweet in real life. But, yeah, we had a little bit of a chat before I walked on set to do my first scene and we talked a little bit about the background work that he did yeah. on his character. And, and then that really, really helped mm. me to kind of figure out who I was and yes. what kind of family life <gasps> would we have had when he was growing up? Well, monsters don't just appear. No, I mean, absolutely. monsters are made, aren't they? And, and yeah. I think she's got to take responsibility for that. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, I don't did, think she will. <laughs> <laughs> did you frighten the children on set? Yes, there's a little boy, adorable little boy, who, who is who's supposed to be my grandson. And, and try as I might, I couldn't make this kid <laughs> laugh because, of course, I looked like you saw in that picture. I looked terrifying. terrifying. So I was going up to this little boy and sort of, you know, doing all my best funny voices <laughs> that I used to do when my kids were little. Wow. And he just want you could see, he just wanted to cry. It oh, was that's awful. hilarious. Well, that means that you're very good at portraying a horrible woman. I think and it's that's the wig and the outfit as much fine. as anything. Well, that, that <laughs> must help. But I was really interested to hear that perfume gets you in character. Yeah. The I, smell of someone, the different... smell that you spray on. I use a different scent for each character I do. I used to work in a perfume shop when I just left drama school. That, right. was, my, that was my way ah, of making money. Okay. And um, I got really into the fact that if you went home having sprayed something on yourself to show to a customer, 
um, that that would actually kind of change your mood and change the way you were during the day. So I now use a different scent for each character. Do you? I have to confess, lots of other actors find this the height of pretentiousness. <laughs> So, you know, I can't say that it's... But I do it nonetheless, you I know. I think it's really good. What sort of perfume did the, the, the formidable Lady Whitworth have? Well, anybody in a costume drama, right, I think it has to be. <laughs> 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 um, I think it has to be something that's quite sort of pure and probably a yes. single, like a flower scent. Right. So I think she was... Orange Blossom, I seem to remember. Orange Blossom, oh, yeah. she's terrifying. Look at her. Because it's quite scared. acrid as well, Orange yeah. Blossom. Yeah, so I'm you really can scared. smell it as she walks in. And what about, isn't it absolutely outrageous? Now, I'm, I'm very cross about this. It's outrageous the way that people, you know, they show pictures of, of Aidan, who's pole dark, with his top off. You're and about it's to just, show that picture, It's totally aren't you? gratuitous. <laughs> and we're showing it in the mega screen just to show how outrageous it is, how frankly. Gratuitous I think it it's is. terrible. I mean, there's a certain amount of redressing the balance. I think that's what's <laughs> so going do I on think here. It's great. But I also think, you know, as long as it's done with a bit of respect, and as long as we don't forget that somebody like Aidan is a seriously good actor. Agreed. As well. Agreed. Absolutely. And to be honest, it was his idea. So was we don't, it? Feel, oh, we okay. don't feel as bad. It was his idea to do that's the scything. <laughs> I, got everybody. I don't know why I'm doing that. Well, he's only got scything. himself to blame. Exactly. And it's, it's, I don't think, I, I mean, I think we'll just have to look at that a little bit longer. Just yeah. to, you know, yeah. Lorraine, show everyone. I'm, I'm here. Oh, sorry. I'm here. Not there. I'm here. <laughs> Rebecca, thank you. And good luck with Impossible Things Before thank Breakfast. We, we do quite a lot of Impossible Things Before <laughs> Breakfast. So thank you. It's great to see you. Thank you Can't very wait much. wait to see you in Poldark.